Yes, folks, it's Tales uh, from the Jails with John G. Sutton. Do please like and subscribe. It does help, and uh, it's down there. Thank you very much. Don't forget to read my book as well. I'm going to talk today about the murder of Jack the Hat McVitty and the imprisonment of a man called Tony Lambriano, uh, who was uh, working with the Cray Twins at the time. Let me see if I can show you Tony Lambriano's photograph, so you'll know who I'm talking about. There we are. Very clear, this, is it? Yeah. Do my best to get it. There we are. That's Tony Lambriano. I don't know if you can see it, yeah. You just work it round that way. Uh, oh, well, there we go. Not very clear, I know, but uh, that, that's Tony Lambriano. You can look him up online. Yeah, there we are. That's him, yeah. He was at the Scrubs when I was at the Scrubs. Uh, and uh, actually, he was a very good cook. Uh, he was on D-Wing, and his, mate, his mates were the, were, the, were the train robbers. Gordon Goody was his big mate uh, in there. Gordon Goody was... Uh, in the final stretches of serving his time for the great train robbery. And uh, on D-Wing, which was the lifer's wing at the Scrubs, they were allowed to uh, cook their little kitchenette that they used there in a converted cell. And uh, they they were preparing meals. And uh, I was talking to Tony Lambriano. I'll tell you who else was there as well. Uh, Gordon Goody was there, and Gordon Goody and uh, Lambriano were, uh, they they kind of cook for each other, you know. So that so they were, they were they were good buddies. But uh, Lambriano was sentenced in I think it was sixty uh, nine for the uh, accomplice uh, being an accomplice to uh, the Cray twins in the murder of Jack the Hat Mike Vitti who was stabbed to death by Reggie Cray. Originally, I believe that the plan was to shoot Jack the Hat McVitie, who'd been going round London telling everybody he intended to kill the, tr the, Cray, the Cray twins, which was a bit of a mistake, you know, because the Cray twins were as mad as gnats, and uh, Ronnie had just shot George Cornell, uh, in uh, the blind beggar in in London, uh, in fact, uh, the reports were that uh, I am laughing because this seems quite odd. Uh, the, the the song playing on the jukebox, the record playing on the jukebox at the time that they opened fire and killed George Cornell was uh, the Walker Brothers singing, "The sun ain't gonna shine anymore." The stars ain't gonna rise in the sky. That one, yeah? Bang! Yeah, and uh, that's what happened. So, uh, he was something, it didn't actually involve him murdering uh, Jack the Hat McVitie, but Tony Lambriano disposed of the body. Apparently, they dumped it outside a church. They wrapped it up in a big cloth uh, and uh, dumped it in, a, in an eiderdown, actually, and dumped it outside St. Mary's Church at Rotherhithe. Uh, uh, it was left there and subsequently it was removed by a guy called Freddie Foreman, who was one of the big uh, villains in London at the time. And according to Freddie Foreman, he took it on a boat and threw Jack the Hat into the sea. Uh, but Jack the Hat had been... He practically signed his own death warrant, hadn't they, by uh, intimidating the Cray twins. As indeed did George Cornell, because he was calling the Cray twins uh, a couple of great puffs, you know, which uh, I think Ronnie didn't like that too much. But anyway, it, it was Reggie that killed Jack the Hat McVitie. And uh, for his assistance to the Cray twins, Tony Lambriano, who was part Greek and part English. His, his father was Greek and uh, his mother was uh, an English lady. Uh, and uh, they, uh, the, the, the jury found him guilty and he got 15 years. Well, he was serving that when I was at the Scrubs in 1975. 
Yeah. Well, he was, I tell you, he had a sense of humour, despite the fact that, despite the fact that he was locked up in prison, it, it, it didn't seem to, uh, it didn't play on his mind. He was quite an enter entertaining character, as indeed was Gordon Goody. Gordon Goody was a highly intelligent man. And he went on to run a pub in Spain, I believe. I can't exactly say where the pub was, but I know he ran a, he ran a bar in Spain for quite a long time, about 30 years after he got out of the scrubs. So he did, he did well for himself, but he was always an intelligent man, and he was the brains behind, uh, or part of the brains behind, the uh, the great train robbery, along with Buster, whatever his name was. Anyway, yeah, and uh, people talk about uh, the, 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 the guy who escaped from... Uh, Wandsworth, yeah, Ronnie Biggs. Ronnie Biggs was a driver. They never rated him at all, at all. The Gordon Goody was telling me, oh, I have nothing to do with him. I think just a golfer, you know, get in the car, drivers here, drivers there. That was Ronnie Biggs. That was all he did. He had no part whatsoever in the playing, any, any kind of planning for this uh, venture and uh, it was a shock to them when they found out how much money they got because you know, all that money comes the problem of what do you do with it you know and that uh, of course partly led to their undoing but uh, yeah so I'm talking about Tony Lambriano uh, when I knew him it was 1975-76 he was on D-Wing he, he, he had he was generally considered to be uh, a gentleman, actually, and uh, was treated as such by the other inmates uh, with a great deal of respect, because obviously he'd been uh, an enforcer for the uh, for the Cray twins. And I don't think you get to be an enforcer for the Cray twins unless you're a bit of a handy lad. So obviously Tony was, but uh, he he died actually. He he died in uh, I think it was two. Thousand and four or something like that. He didn't live long, but anyway, obviously his fur, his flame burnt brightly while it was there. So there we have it. Jack McVitie, Jack the Hat McVitie, was born in on the nineteenth of April, nineteen thirty-two, and he was murdered on the twenty-ninth of October. 1969 so he'll be 35 and uh, he was originally going to be shot but the gun jammed when uh, Reggie tried to shoot him his gun jammed so he he had a knife on him and uh, stabbed him to death in the face actually stabbed him in the face and in the chest well, nice way to go eh so that's today's little story about uh, Jack McVitie. Uh, quite a, an infamous story. It was the downfall of the Cray twins because they were taken to uh, the, the court at the Old Bailey. It took the jury six hours to arrive at the guilty verdicts and both Ronnie and Reggie Cray got life imprisonment uh, with a minimum... Uh, recommendation of 30 years of course they didn't uh, exactly ever get out because they were taken to uh, Broadmoor and confined to Broadmoor indefinitely as being criminally insane they were definitely uh, strange people people wonder how how did the Cray twins get away with it for all that time Lord Boothby is the answer Lord Boothby. Look it up. The Gangsters and the Peer. P double E R. Not Peer as in Blackpool, but Peer as in. Uh, yeah, P double E R. You know, the people that get paid £365 a day just for attending. Well, they don't exactly attend, do they? I mean, they go up, press, press a button to book in, yeah? And uh, when they booked into the House of Lords to get the £365, then they can go back to their clubs and uh, get on with what they're good at, getting pissed. Anyway, I'm going to read you now. A, uh, as, as is my want, of course, 
I'm going to read to you. This is by William Shakespeare. It's one of my favourite uh, verses by him. It's uh, Sonnet 18. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? It's it's about the work of the the poet, encapsulating the the beauty of this individual, and what he's saying in this poem is that uh, time will rob us of our youth and our good looks, and uh, we will eventually return to dust in effect, but. Because I, as the poet, have written about you, your fairness and your beauty and your elegance shall never fade because it's captured in this, in this work. And indeed, that is the case. 300, 400 years later, here I am, psychic John G. John G. Sutton of Tales from the Jails, reading you... Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, And summer's leith hath all too short a date. Sometime too hot the eye of heaven shines, And often is his gold complexion dimmed, and every fair from fair sometime declines. By chance, or nature's changing course untrimmed, but thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou owest, nor shall death brag Thou wanderest in his shade, when in eternal lines to time thou growest. So long as men can breathe or eyes can see, so long lives this and this gives life to thee. William Shakespeare, Sonnet 18 I sincerely hope you enjoyed that little rant today. Tales from the Jails. Do like and subscribe. And I hope you read my book. Part 3 will be published very soon. I will keep you informed here. Tales from the Jails with John G. Sutton.